On this episode, LFC stops by. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 260 of the Ask Gary V Show. And I'm super fired up. Linda, before I introduce you to everybody, yep. I was watching a 30 for 30. Which one was that? Mike and the Mad Dog. Oh, you made an appearance in that. I did. Yes, and that, yes the whole Mike Piazza, my favorite metal. That's what time. it was. It was Got so it. perfect for me. You looked, you look, do you know you I look, look better 90s. now? You look yeah. better now than then. Yeah, you're I incredible. Had big hair. Thank <laughs> yes, you. It was. You're welcome. So if you don't know already, for the four people in the world that don't know, I'm here with Linda Cohn, who is, this is not a joke. I genuinely believe this is a legend. And I'm tough with throwing that around because I want to be a legend and so I don't like throwing it around so simply but I genuinely believe that and so Linda, please for the audience that's watching now that maybe hasn't been in sports culture which would then mean maybe they haven't seen you or you haven't hit their radar, why don't you spend one minute on who you are and then I've got some questions. I mean this is, before I apologize, I already cut you off before I started and this is gonna get everybody super excited Um, but the sushi dinner that you and I had. Fabulous two months ago is literally probably one of my favorite dinners of all time. Seriously? It was amazing. First of all, we were the only people in the restaurant. We owned it. (laughs) Yes, we did. (laughs) We did. Second, I was really amped up and brought some serious, deep sports knowledge, which I could tell through your eyes impressed you. It was amazing. And also, but the irony was, because you're all about taking pictures visually, they didn't let us roll any camera. I know. They kicked D-Rock. You got kicked out. That was, the, that was actually it the was, best part. It, it's like never happens to you. No, it happens all I, the time. Oh, okay, really? Yeah. Even that imposing figure that he is? Yeah, even with that. All right, Linda, <laughs> tell, tell everybody right, who you the are. The two cents, all right, here's yeah. the two three cents. cents. Three cents. Three okay. cents. Legends get three cents. Okay, nobody has hosted more sports centers than me on Okay, ESPN. hold on, let's just say that one more time. All right, nobody, male or female, has hosted more sports centers on ESPN than me, Linda Cohn. <laughs> cool. All right. <laughs> And I don't, you know, who knew if that was the plan going in? I was just doing what I loved, which is loving sports. And as you know, having a passion for something and saying, what the hell? Let me just do this. So that's what I did. And I just got into the Hall of Fame. But here's the thing, Gary. Which Hall of Fame? The Broadcasters yeah, Hall of Fame? Yeah, the Broadcasters. Now, is this Sports so, Media Hall of Fame. So real quick, I need to, you, for you to answer and this. And that was weird because I'm far from done, Gary. Well, I'm aware. I know how yeah, you roll. We haven't you, even yeah, started here. Yeah. Okay, but before you get to that part, now is the sports... Uh, uh, what is it? What's the official? The Announce official. Do you not know? Yeah, I don't know. Love. Google me. What there is it? it is. Thank you. National Sports Community Hall of Fame. Now, is this a bullshit Hall of Fame like we have in the Advertising Hall of Fame? So there's an Advertising Hall of Fame <laughs> in our world, and like people that are just getting started are getting in it. Like my no. friend Bonin's in it. No, he Bonin's amazing, but he's not ready to be in a Hall of Fame. Is this a real one yeah. or a bullshit one? Yeah. Sports writers, sports casters. Vin Scully else. was one of the That's ones fine. I was in. Okay. Who's the weakest person in this <laughs> Hall of Fame? It's not about who the best person is. Right. It's about who the weak, you make sense, but it's like, Craig Kilborn in it? No. Okay, okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> no, so, I cannot, if you would have told Craig me Kilborn you would have mentioned Craig Kilborn in my time yes, here yes, on the Gary yes, Vee show, yes. I would have been like, please no. <laughs> I, by the way, I loved his 18 minutes. Yeah. I mean, those were the best. Okay, yeah. so okay, I know this story, but I'm going to ask you to say it. Um, can I tell you my little story first? You can do anything. All right, because, you know, again, I when I go to a place and yes. your humble home, it's yes. amazing with all your Thank amazing you. humans around me. Yes, there's a lot of them. Um, I, I can't come empty handed and Thank you. it was you know so first of all because yes. you know uh, because I know how much you love tongue in cheek the Pittsburgh Penguins. I hate the Penguins. I know. So I thought after they won their second straight Stanley yes. Cup where I was on the ice for yes. celebrating. Why'd you bring this? With Sidney Crosby because I like stirring the pot with you. Yeah, understood. So there it is. We'll leave so that. So I'm going to take this. This, one, this uh, will not be going on No, the this will not be this going on This might be in the bathroom. No, no, no I've got something. Correct? I'm going to take it and oh, okay. it real quick. Where's the cameras? Okay. <laughs> this is going to, I don't know if you're watching, one of my best friends in high school, Steve Nash, Ooh. right, is a huge Penguins fan. When the Rangers lost the series when Graves brought, broke his hand, yes. right? Uh, that loss was the most devastating loss. I know they won in 94, what was that, 92, 93? They were 94, 92, 93, they were supposed to win the cup. Correct, that's the year. That was cr- the year, and that that's was the right. year they lost to the Pens. That's right. That loss to the Pens, besides, let's think of all time moments when I cried in sports. <laughs> 
all time number top. How let's long? do a sports center thing How here. How long? Top yeah. ten. We gotta let's do, do a top, top ten. I don't know if I've sports got ten. ten. All right. By what? the way, let's make pretend Three? number six through ten okay. is all jet games, random jet games. Well, but here are the top ten. I was tens. just gonna say, there's no question. More than ten losing, jet moments. Losing, <laughs> Linda. This could end real quick. I know. Uh, <laughs> no question. At number. I should probably go in order. I'm gonna go in order back. I apologize for breaking this, but I wanna get it right. The time I cried the most, not even close, All time. in sports history was when the Jets lost to the Browns in the 86 playoff game. The Jets were winning by 10 points with, with four minutes left in the game and had the ball in Cleveland and somehow miraculously lost in double overtime. That was number one. Number two was when the Knicks lost game seven to the Rockets. 94. Correct, cried like a baby my senior year in high school, cried from 10.30 p.m. to four in the morning. When John Starks failed basically to show up in that one. That is correct, that crushed me. Number three. Yes. When Macho Man Randy Savage <laughs> lost the title to Hulk Hogan, even though by then I was mature enough to know that the writing was on the wall and he was gonna lose. And it's fake. The one per, then it was fake. Okay. There was 1% chance that he was going to win. He didn't, and I cried for a good two, three hours. <laughs> Number four, when the Rangers lost to the Pens in that series. That was the Ranger team that I thought was gonna win the cup. That was the team. That was devastating to me. Yeah. I hate fucking Pittsburgh yeah, I know so you much. Do. That's why I brought that. And then, I understand. <laughs> and then number five. Number five. What do you think? Another jet moment? <laughs> Probably, <laughs> yes. I've got so many, ran- I've got an amazing, is AJ around? AJ had a lump under his armpit when oh. he was three and oh. my parents and most doctors thought it was cancer. Oh wow. The Jets lose a random regular season game to the uh, Packers uh, during this time. This yes. is early Favre. The Jets lose a devastating middle of the season game. I start crying my ass off. This is a reg, I'm 16, 17. It's a regular season football game. I am crying like your dog died. My mom has been watching me cry over Jet games for years. She looks me dead in the face and loses her mind angry. One of the few times she was truly, she's like, your brother is potentially like, like, I don't know what she said in Russian, but she was like, your brother's sick. Right. She already went there, and she's like, and you haven't cried once, and you're crying about this shit? And I was like, yep. And you're a teenager? Oh, I cry, so <laughs> I, actually, actually, thank you for saying that. You triggered, that's moving to number six. Okay. I have the official number five. In the Jets' regular season <laughs> opener in 1999. Have we even talked postseason yet? <laughs> in the Jets' regular season opener in oh, 1998. Not in playoff games. You Go. might remember this. Yes. Linda, this is a very famous moment. Uh-oh. The Jets' opening game in San Francisco, they lose in overtime because Garrison Hurst had a 98 yard running play. Do you remember this? I'll tell you, former Niner grade of the past. Yes. Garrison Hurst, he Nine, came and went. We went His to overtime. was against you. Went into overtime, <laughs> 98, the Jets kick the ball off to start overtime. Right. The, the ball bounces game around over. weird. No, no, great news. The ball bounces weird and the Niners have to start on the two. I'm dreaming of getting a safety to win the game. Right. Perfect they field. hand the ball off to Garrison Hurst and he runs it 98 yards for and you a know, touchdown. back then that didn't happen. Back then? You when know? Is that, do you know how many 98 right. yard rushing now we've yards? Seen, we've actually seen like 100 y- one yard but rushing. You know, like, back, you know the, when they start in Linda, the end zone your, and they listen, run. Listen, you're a genius. What do you think? 30, 40 all time plays over 98 yards? Like in overtime, Jets lose. I just left college. I was now in New York. I cry, go in my car and stick with me here. Drive to Boston. Incredible. I was so devastated. Was it therapeutic? I, to, I it wanted was to see my girlfriend. That's oh, really the truth. So that was the therapeutic. But not, no, D Rock, not really the truth. You fell for it. I cried we all and did. was devastated. We all did. But I figured I'd go see my girlfriend because I knew I was going to work my ass off and what, never see her again. All right, which brings me to my second attempt. <laughs> yes, thank second you. attempt. So this at will go gift. to Steve Nash, my high school friend. Okay. Not the Steve Nash who used to play for the Suns, no, who was an no, MVP. No, I'm not with him yet. Okay, all right. Yeah, we don't know what he's doing, but he's long retired. So there's other things. Speaking of the Jets, so you know, I got to credit my brother. Uh, I want to unwrap this. This one I'm excited about. We thought, because, you know, obviously huge fans, love the wall, it's love clear, the personality, it's all way. you, um, and it's great. And like, you know what? So we're like, let's get a custom-made bobblehead 
Right. Wait, yes. wait. Keep I'm going to build this up only for him to be As me down. as the owner of the Jets. Okay. Yes. And <laughs> something happened along the way. I lost an eye. That was lost in translation. <laughs> um, and and you'll recognize the, the color. This is not good. <laughs> Apparently, they're colorblind. What? And so it's Al Toon's number. So, they, so basically, guys, this is like um, Pat Summerall, because he wore number 88 back Hold in the on. day for the New York football a, giants. Also, Akeem Nix. Okay, but this looks more. Now, first of all, does this even look like you? So I have bad news. So first of all, it, so they look, screwed it, up. Do, it doesn't look like me, because there's not enough gray hair. Number two. Guys, but I think they, this, got, they nailed the five o'clock shadow they that did. you have, Linda. Yeah, I like that, Linda. Yes, this is more of a Patriots jersey than a Giants jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know so, that, right? Yeah, you guys know that, right? I I was trying to take the high road for yes. you, keep it in New York. I'm not putting this. On. And obviously, oh for two. Neither item is making the shelf. Great news though. Great news though. You will, this now leads me to exactly how I wanted it to play out. Okay. You will be the first ever. Two time <laughs> guest, though I think we've actually done that with somebody before. Casey, maybe? I don't know. But That'd anyway, cool. Linda, you're coming back and All you right. guys will get another attempt okay. to bring me a gift. <laughs> that sounds great. good. They obviously, the reason why they screwed it up, they must have thought, who the heck would want to be the owner of the Jets? They must mean the Giants. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you I keep mean, asking <laughs> questions, we'll keep answering. Thanks for coming on, Linda. Uh, Just, Linda, Linda. I love you, Gary. You know that. I love Gary, you the most. Okay. Really, really, you're one of the, what, out of, it's really amazing how much I adore you and how excited I was for today. Linda, please. Now we've had a lot yeah. of fun and I'm sure people listening are having a blast, but please do the part of this interview that's gonna matter the most. We're gonna get the yeah. questions soon. Facebook, please put in your phone number. We're gonna call in, we're gonna do a bunch. And honestly, I always, you know, I still think I'm probably gonna do a sports radio show. Weirdly oh. enough, I think there's a dark horse chance that Linda and I will do a sports radio show together it. and be number one in the country. But before we get into that, I want you to tell us your career from beginning to end or at least beginning to Sports yeah, Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I'll I'll play around the edges. Here's why. This I, is before. Uh, this I'm is anxious. extremely I'm motivational to me, and I rarely get motivated. This is incredibly powerful in my biggest thesis. You willed this into existence in an ungodly quick time, and it just I feel like there's a lot of people watching me right now. I'm always and listening. I'm always trying to get you to action. I know a lot of people are listening right now. Pull over. Stop your treadmill. I mean this. I mean this. You need to listen to these next 4 minutes because this is the most valuable thing that's going to happen in the show from beginning to end, Linda. Go. All right. Thanks so much, Gary. Uh, it's here's true. the deal. Um I live my dream. I'm still living it. Reason why I grew up loving sports. I was a kid with low self-esteem. I wore thick glasses. I didn't feel good about myself. People laugh at that. I grew up on Long Island, middle class family. What do I have to feel sorry for? But I didn't have anything to look forward to. Sports gave me that, gave me something to look forward to. Then I started playing hockey, street hockey. And ironically, I was a goalie. Why was I was a goalie? Because I felt comfortable being hidden because okay, I didn't feel good about myself. Finally got contact lenses, realized I was a damn good goalie. You know, I had tremendous eye-hand coordination, ironically, Gary, because I, I was it. so nearsighted. Yeah. But the contacts helped. And long story <laughs> short, it like... You contacts? I Contact lens, right. So anyway, I was a kid. What got me back in the day growing layers of tough skin to be able to handle the job that I do now and throughout the years, 30 years in the business at least, is the fact that I played hockey with boys that were seven and eight years old, ice hockey, when I was 14 years old, then I was 15. They didn't let me play with boys my age back in the day, sure. but I still wanted to play. I wore the goalie mask, ponytail sticking out of the mask. Moms would whisper. I'd hear the moms. Sure. You know what they would say? What's that girl doing on the ice playing with my son? Yeah, of course. Playing hockey. I was just, I love hockey. Why can't I play hockey? And so that kind of helped me block out the noise. So anyway, as we fast forward, that was the reason, actually, That's to get the foundation. Tough. That was the foundation because I was always doing something that I loved, and I didn't know where it was going to lead. Yeah, I wanted it to lead to a NHL goalie job. I wanted to be in the NHL. That did was that not happening. Did that run through your mind? Did you it think, did. Did you think like that's first of all that's amazing? It did because it was my strength. You know, the feeling I got when I made a big save and I saved the game for my teammates. I wanted to be in that pressure situation. I lived for it because suddenly I meant something. Again. 
kid with low self-esteem used to listen to depressing music. I mean, back in my day, it was John Denver and the Carpenters. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, yep. do we have to bring up Karen Carpenter here? You just we Google sure her. do. I know. So um, Shake's know, a huge fan. There it is. But it's depressing. So um, <laughs> it was a foundation. And so I couldn't be an NHL goalie. OK, so what can I do? All right, I eventually played hockey with girls in college and majored in broadcasting. But then, this is what gets me excited when, forget when I finally met you, but when I knew about you before I finally got to meet you and we had that great dinner at Sushi Place, the thing is, it's like, God, I'm seeing myself because I knew I was a 24-7 girl. I worked seven days a week trying to get a break. I did radio, I did news on radio, I did local Long Island cable Take, TV. Listen, I, I listen. One, I wish D Rock filmed our first dinner because I did an. Un, I always listen, but through my talking, this dinner I did a lot of listening. So I really want you to go through it in detail. What is your first? So you, so you're doing broadcasting in school. Yeah, major in communication. Yep. You know, you do what you do. Obviously, you get involved. Yep. You know, people know that now. Now it's so awesome. With social media, you can you can create your own persona. Of course. People will see you. Back in the my day, of course. you had to make a tape. You had to hope that news director or sports director so would see you it. Get, so as you're in school, you think, I want to be a big time sports I, what? I didn't even say big time. I want a job where I can talk about sports because guess and what? And how rare was that I for perk women? Up when I and how rare sports. was that for women? It didn't exist at that so time. So could you look at anybody at that point or no? There was no role model. I had no role models Zero. for women in sports. Early '80s, when I was doing radio uh, and news, I didn't get a break in sports until I worked for WCBS Radio '88 here in New York City. This was before WFAN. I'm aware. And then I got to do updates, sports updates with WFAN. They just had this Wait, big thing ahead, on Mike in the middle. I want everybody, I, I want everybody hearing this. What is the first job you get and how did you get it? Patchogue, Long Island, WALK Radio, 50,000 watt. I did news updates. And you know what happened? I volunteered to cover. You'll love this. I know, that's why I'm making you say I'm a diehard Ranger fan, duh. And <laughs> I volunteered to cover the hated New York Islander games at the Nassau Coliseum, an hour away, the Nassau Coliseum from, from Patchogue, Long Island, where I did news updates. I created the idea, I brought it to my news director, I said, listen, I will go with my little tape recorder and cover Islander games. I will file 45 second radio reports you can put in your little news updates for all to hear. Just pay for my gas. Pay 10 bucks for my gas. There and back, you don't even have to pay me extra. What did that do, Gary? It opened up doors. Sure I networked, you networked and met other free. people. I worked for free to get with with my eyes wide open, not knowing, not knowing if there would be you know a light at the end of the tunnel. Linda, one of my biggest, most angry things in the world is how many people don't like working for free yeah, because, I, and it's a very big internet culture thing, right? It's Eric's world. It's my buddies Freed and DHH. Like it's that it's that you should get paid, but it's completely not factoring in supply and demand. If there's a million people that want that thing and there's only eight th things to be done, you've gotta factor that reality. Like I'm stunned, I mean D-Rock, like so much of my life, like it's unbelievable how much I believe in it if you want it, if you want it. By the way, you're in control. Just because somebody else is doing it, you don't have to, right. but this thought that people that are working for free are ruining it for everybody else is not taking real life into consideration. Exactly. So you willed your way by doing that. Right, without. What years was that? This was uh, 1980, I wanna say 83, 82, So they had just won four. all their cups? Yes, and then they, and I think I jinxed them because they stopped winning. Right, so. They you, still beat the Rangers the on old, a regular but, basis. Correct, but, but you actually. Speaking of crying during Belinda, games. this is something that needs to be shared yeah. on social media. Quietly, I think that you actually jinxed, they won four Stanley Cups in right, a row. Right, right. You start covering them. Right. You're a real Rangers fan. Right. And they have not won a cup since. Uh, that's accurate. Correct. There is actually the curse of Linda Cohn on <laughs> the Islanders. That's accurate and I'm loving Linda, this the way is a this big sounds. Deal. Wait a minute, this is like a t-shirt? This is like a meme? This is like this is the great. reverse of 1940? This is, this is, did we just break this is this could get really big in the hockey community. Can we confirm? Because I'm a little worried right now that your first year might have even been a year after, or actually when they won. I see you thinking. I am because we're, we're gonna, the Edmonton Oilers won in 1984 when they finally uh, broke, broke the jinx. Yep. And I believe I will double check, but I believe brother that is the accurate Linda, thing. We need to do some real homework here because here's why. If 
true, this can turn into a substantial meme in hockey culture. I believe intuitively here on episode 260 yeah. of the Ask Gary V Show, we have established sports' second biggest curse, maybe third because the goat for the Cubs. Let's make this yeah. third. Linda, I think there's a Linda go- Cone I, I jinx think, I think on the Islanders. Jinx. And I think that the Islanders will not win a Stanley Cup until you Can die. Can we double check? Well, <laughs> right. When we, when we uh, uh, and by the way, the curse can continue if somehow the Rangers can get John Tavares, who hasn't been signed to a long term extension. That, what you're thinking? that would be awesome. That would be the curse. Tyler <laughs> gives me the heads up. We should double check while I'm still here and I'm still alive, thank you. Uh, regarding, <laughs> you caught that. I was trying to sneak the, that the by last while you year were... the Islanders won the Stanley Cup. No, that I know. Oh, when you I, mean if it, that matches with yeah, you. I know that that's the last time thing. they won. Yeah. All right, Linda, you get the job doing the sports brief. I want you to, I know when we're, okay. we're just having too much fun. I like I you too know. much. I need this whole thing. Well, this is I need for you to go radio to radio show. You need we, to go to we, Pacific we, Northwest. We great, you have to go to Calgary Olympics. I didn't forget shit. I want them to hear this because I believe that everybody who's watching right now who wants to be a rapper, who wants to be a painter, who wants wants to be a startup founder. Your story is so important to me because of the couple of things you did and why you did them and how you did them in the face of your marriages. Your I need you to tell it the way you told it to me because it's it's going to help people. So you hustle and you get your gas paid for free. Right. You start to cover the to, islanders. To cover the islanders. Keep going. And I'm gonna try I'm, to shut up. And then I meet, you know, I meet important people. Again, not knowing that I was gonna meet anybody, but what was I doing? I was just being myself, following my passion, covering hockey. And again, you knew I loved hockey because I was covering the team I hated the most and made me cry. Like the Jets have made you cry as it's been well documented just right now. So But we the move reverse on. actually there actually that would be me. Uh, covering the Patriots because yes. the, the Rangers and Jets oh, were making cry. Point. Right, it's the reverse. So you point. actually covered the Patriots, yes. which is insane fucking shit. That's a Keep good going. point. That's a very good point. Yeah, Although going. I've seen enough Ranger Islander games where the Ra- I've been in their dressing room and they're crying after Islander losses. No, I get it. Yeah, I, mean, I um, still hate pot band. That's right. Go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> it's still sad. Um, so anyway, uh, I met the right people, and that's what you everyone has to Who? remember. Ed Ingalls, sports how? director for WCS. Him watching me handle myself, how I handle myself professionally dealing because with players always watching right and even when, when you don't think they are at, that's very great thank you for saying that. that's a very good point and you know getting back can I fast forward a little bit nope that's one of the messages I always say because I'm very something I'm really no means into no, no but no. something Do I'm not, really yes I'm we've established everybody's watching I know I need your story because we're not going to get to uh, okay. literally the whole podcast is going to okay. be done we're just going to get to I the know. Calgary Olympics <laughs> can I mean can we go so so okay. he's watching first first by the way all this led to me uh being the first woman sports doing sports reports in New York on the radio WCBS Ed Ingalls hired me to do sports updates overnight that were repeated over and over and over again this was before WFAN all sports talk radio then WFAN hired real me. quick stop mm-hmm. how many years out so you you're pl- you're playing field hockey in college Right? Uh, no, or no, ice, ice hockey. hockey. Respect. Field you're hockey like, didn't last long. Too boring. Respect. It was in high school. Respect. <laughs> you're playing hockey. You get this first job news. Right. You want sports, so you go and hustle it. Right. They watch somebody. Ed sees you right. hustling and hires you to do the overnight thing. Right. How quickly did that all happen? That happened within after one hockey season. Right. So about a year after your like because one hockey season, then he's hiring me to. Then he says, "Hey, you want to cover the Mets at Shea doing this? Hey, you want to cover the U.S. Open for us? Yes, 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 yes. Hey, you want to do sports updates? So yes, within a year. And how at this point are you feeling any flack for this? Is what nineteen eighty four? Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, this is all in the mid eighties, and um, also I was on Sports Phone, which is a legendary thing where you used to do sports updates in a in a room that was the size of a telephone booth, and people would pay. People would pay. Gamblers would pay. Big time because that's Tyler's, what it was. Tyler, you. Tyler's a degenerate and will probably be dead within a year. <laughs> all right, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, he just gambles. All the, he gambles on anything. There's a, there's a lot he of, gambled with D-Rock about how long this interview is actually going to go. There's, and he's sick. He's there, a sick there is, child. I don't expect him to be around much longer. No, Why do you think is, I just hired Z today? New assistant, Z There is way too much death talk in this episode. I we must listen, end that. Okay, all right. Keep so going. we're on, so we do it. So seven days a week, seven days a week, seven days a week. While I'm at FAN, I said, and I was doing local cable TV, couldn't do sports, wasn't allowed. What did I do? I baked cookies for the camera crew one afternoon so I can tape, put together a sports tape. 
I created my own sports tape for local Long Island TV so I could send it out to cities where I wanted to live, Gary. And one of those cities was Seattle, Washington. Why did you want to live in Seattle? Because in Calgary, when I went out there, I fell in love Why with did you Calgary. Go to Calgary? For because I was also one of my million of jobs that I worked seven days a week was ABC Radio, where I did sports update. And back in then, in the 1988, ABC had the rights to the Olympics. So Calgary was the Winter Olympics in 1988. I went out there, Fun fact, fell Brian in love. Leach and Brian Rick, Brian Leach and, and Mike, Mike Richter, Richter were on that 88 US team and later became Rangers and won the actual cup that the Rangers finally got. And that team in Calgary was an embarrassment. The Russians destroyed the shit Finished out of them. Finished eighth. They didn't, The Russians destroyed right. them. Finished eighth. Eight, didn't even in mental competition. Little did I know they would be winning the cup for my dream team. So, um, yeah. So that's the whole Calgary thing. Who was that awesome also, ranger that they traded when he was young to the Blackhawks? Amato? Oh, Tony Amato. And he was, was he but on that, that team But that was too? a big trade because but, that brought back Mike Garten. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think Mike Garten was a big, I think it was Mike Garten, maybe not. He but came from Amato Washington. was Amato on that 88 Olympic team? Well, he just, might have been. Because his name just popped in my head in my but head. But I don't know, because I only remember um, Richard and Richter. Richard, I knew that. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's let's fast forward. Yes. So, so you go to Cal- Calgary. So real, real quick, so I, I apologize said, to interrupt, I but I have I wanna, to. No, yeah. Linda, I have to because I want to show. Yes, but I want to bring value to the audience because you took every. So Linda, I get a hundred fucking emails a day of people say, "I want to be a rap star. I want to be a country star. I want to be a YouTube star," and they don't work anywhere close to seven days a week. You're about to tell a story of how you got into the fucking Hall of Fame, whether legit or not, all on the back. It's legit. Okay, all on the back of working seven days a week. If you weren't in all the hustle you're doing, you're fucking driving to fucking Long Island. On top of everything, yeah, you do yeah. this ABC thing, which takes you to Calgary, Yep. which makes you, what happens in Calgary? Well, I fall in love with Calgary, and I go, wait a minute, I wanna move to Canada. Remember, I love hockey, but that wasn't <laughs> logistic at that point in my life and realistic. So what is the equivalent? So I asked one of our producers who was working with me, I said, what's an American city that's most like <laughs> Calgary? She goes, why don't you come visit me in Seattle in July? Because again, I was there February, come visit me in July, you can drop off your tape, that's what you did back then, to news directors, the CBS, the ABC, the NBC affiliate in Seattle. I apologize real quick. No, go ahead. You fuck faces want to become famous and win. And Linda had to wait from February to fucking July to drop off a tape, but you can DM fuckers on Instagram right now while you're listening. Linda, you have to understand, I'm pissed. People are crying that they can't make it. I hate- And they can literally fucking DM people Yet you had to wait from fucking February to July to drop off a fucking tape. You get 100 emails, I get 100 emails. I, get it. I have people that I respond to. First of all, I love giving back. When if you ask me, I know I'm fast forwarding, I know you want my whole timeline, but I gotta get this in because it's really important to me. Uh, all that shit never would have happened if I wasn't grateful and if I wasn't just living and doing what I really wanted, not worried about what happens if, like worrying about shit that may never, ever happen. Just move forward, just keep going. So anyway, it's important to me right now to give back because when I see qualities of myself, just like you, when you you go back and you do your little, little people have little podcasts or little radio interviews, that's what I try to do and that's what I accomplish because I see you do it and that means a lot to me and it means so much. But then there was people out there that I think have such balls. Like they'll get my email address, but I'll applaud them because then they're like, hey, Lind, this is where it gets bad though. There was this one woman, got my email address, all right? True story. Great, I'm ready to applaud. I'm ready to reply back to her. Hey, wow, great, looking to help. What's your story? Then she says, hey, is it okay if I send you my resume so you can hand it to somebody? That turned me off, Gary. Because she thought you weren't big enough, like important. Like no, what? she thought she didn't want. She stopped doing the work. I see. She she just was I giving, frown upon that because with giving with expectation. Right. I understand. Why don't you pick my brain? You have my attention. You're a I'm fucking will- Hall of Famer. Right. And it's legit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, so I, that's the yes, kind I of do. thing that's important. So when I when I do, which I love doing, and I've been doing it, speaking engagements, you know, keynote, doing things like that, I love the opportunity, just like you, to touch people. I and know I'm completely obsessed with you, Linda. I'm, I, but listen, but it's like mutual. But I know it sounds like a love fest here. I'm sorry, but it's truth. And the the other thing is, it's really true. So when I'm like traveling and stuff, I do. I'm like I, I'm looking on YouTube. I'm looking to see what kind of stuff I can steal from you. If that's okay, full disclosure. Closure. I'm stealing from Gary I want, Vee. I want everything stolen. Okay. It's why I'm putting it out, right. and it's free. Linda, Calgary, you fall in love, 
You go to Seattle, what's happening? Seattle, great. Uh, six months into the Seattle gig, ESPN calls me. That time I was married. My husband at that time said to me, I didn't drop my job. Not that it was a high paying job in his part. <laughs> he goes, I didn't drop my job, move 3,000 miles, only to move all the way back within six months. We're staying. And guess what? Of all the things that was a positive, that was good advice. Because I was able, listen to this, hone my skills. I had a chance to then cover the Mariners, the Seahawks, you know, all the packed, uh, you know, at that time, Super obviously Sonics. the Washington Huskies, the Sonics were there. Really hone my skills. And also, I stopped. I had a kid. I had my daughter, Sammy, who you're going to meet. I had my daughter, Sammy, there, and I kind of like, not slowed down. Not slowed down. How, but old, just were appreciate. This, how old were you at this yeah, well, point? That, at that you point, I'm uh, 30. Oh, really? So okay, I, so this got yeah. stretched out. Okay. So it did. And, that's, and for people that are watching, listening, and all that, Gary... There's always hope. It doesn't matter what age you're what at. What year was that, Lynn? This was 19... Uh, I went out to Seattle in October of 89. And, the, um, and by 90, and they by were... 92, ESPN I was in, wants you. Ju- right. But by 90, they wanted me, but I had to turn and them nine, down. Oh, my God. And then I had to say, listen... How hard if they was want that? me, It was tough. It was tough. Because at that point, ESPN was... In like clearly yeah. on its way. Yeah, totally on its My way. My whole life was about Sports right. Center nineteen ninety. Can you? Everything. I mean, that's pre-internet. Illegal. It's everything. Well, you guys weren't even born. Yeah, yet. these fuckers. These guys but you know, and, and you were a baby. I'm, I was fifteen <laughs> and focused. <laughs> right. And so Wait, you were. You, we, we've established <laughs> you were fifteen and crying over the chat. So yeah, nineteen ninety. I did a lot of yeah. crying. Okay, good. You know, and so oh, so anyway, yeah. So um, so I just figured, and after some basic some therapy and slowing down my life a little and having the. You know, balance, but still having that urge to accomplish and keep going next level and be better. I had a child. It was great. And then they called again two, when? two years late. So my contract in Seattle was three years. They called two and a half years in. So Seattle let who me called? leave the contract early. The bosses, um, you know, uh, Al Jaffe, who was the talent guy at ESPN. And he called again, flew me out to Bristol again. And then we talked and said they wanted to hire me. And they wanted to hire me to host Sports Center and also be a reporter. And it turned out it was more Sports Center they wanted me. And then to this day, the people there in and around, I'm still highlights are the thing that I do well. Why? Because I've always, because I played the games. You know what I'm saying? And I get it, and I get it from an athlete's point of view. I wasn't there to make people cry and win Emmys. Do you understand, <laughs> yes. Gary? And there's yes. so many people in our business that that's all they care about. And that was never it for me because I just loved having this. To me, it was a, it was a, it was a high. It was a legal high. It was that roller coaster that I so love being a fan, and I'll never forget being a fan. And I'm always a fan first to this day. And getting back to your earlier point, you always make believe someone is watching you for the very first time because people always say, "How do you keep this going? How do you stay fresh? How does it still mean something the to you?" The good news is when you're doing something as big as that. You are getting people seeing you for the first time. It's yes, not even, including it's, athletes, and that was the great opportunity because then athletes can see that I'm not a fraud, mm-hmm. that I really did love sports. Well, the hockey guys must obsess over you. It's such a small culture of people right. that actually know hockey. They push. They know that that's true. I mean, they definitely. It's definitely. Is that the there. best? Like, is it the best when you go it's to the why, garden? I mean, yeah, the garden's right it's great. You. The garden, but even yet. anywhere. Yeah. Like, do you see it? I, Take yeah. a good look. <laughs> Yeah, when this can, is why my office. When is can here. I work here? Well, anytime you All come, right, tomorrow, good. right we'll, now. We'll work it out. I'm telling you. I mean, just for D-Rock, this. You're fired. I know. And so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> Linda. Now I'm gonna veer it before we get into the question. Yeah. Because I can't stop talking to you. 19. So when do you go to Sports Center? 1992, 1992 July right. 92. Just celebrated so, 25 years, July 1st. Right. So like, amazing. Congratulations. Thank that you. That is like the golden era for a lot of people. Yes. Of, of personalities, Keith. And Dan, yeah. and like Stuart, like 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 that's when all of you guys yeah. were making up all sorts of words just to top each other. Like, that is like the golden era of Sports Center. But that it, was when it was a cultural phenomenon. That's so true. So you walk in, and what happens? First day, you walk in. Give me a, even give before me two first good day. Even before Go first ahead. day. Take it away. Uh, still in Seattle, moving. Uh, I called my friend who was working there, Gary Miller. Okay, Gary, great broadcaster great. back in the day. Matter of fact, great Gary Miller story, and it's timely. Uh, OJ, Bronco ride. Gary and I were scheduled to do the 11 p.m. Eastern Sports Center on that amazing night where we all thought he was going to blow his brains out in 1994. Yep. Of course, the Knicks and Rockets were playing. There. I was literally right yeah, there. Right there, right? I so, got a story about yeah, that. Yeah, so, ahead. okay, so um, that's what Gary, uh, but that's fast forward. That was 1994, Gary Miller. 
Gar- oh, oh, you're not done. I'm Wait, super into okay, this. So no, Gar- all right, you guys so are going to do sports so center. What I, happens? Before I even go there, so I go. Get, I talk to Gary. He says, Linda, I just got to warn you. You know, not warning, but you know, um, he was buddies with Dan Patrick. I said, can I talk to Dan about me coming there? You know, and Dan, as you mentioned, staple with Keith Olbermann, the big show. The big right? show. I'll never forget what Dan said to me. You know, he said, do you realize, and he may have said it tongue in cheek, because you know, Dan Patrick's a funny guy. And he said to me, he goes, do you realize every woman before you has basically failed here? I mean, talk about rolling out the red carpet. Yeah. And so imagine that. You know, here the you are. The best part you know, about that story is that's a hell of a lot better than Keith did. Yeah, well, <laughs> Keith, right. You know, and, 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 and I love KO, and he's something special, and he is he unique. Sure is. You know, he's a piece of work. Yep. But, so how did, that, uh, how did that go with you? Like That you was said great, that? but I, you go through a phase, and I think a lot of you know, the people did that follow you. Did you say to Dan, you, Dan, fuck you, I played hockey with seven-year-old boys? See, I wish I did. See, that's where the little girl comes sure, out. Sure. And that's part of my message when I speak to people, and I speak guys and gals, yes. because there's a lot of self-esteem issues. Sure. And I still fight it to this day, Gary, fighting that little girl and giving that little girl inside me a hug. Because I never but, got the but, hugs. But the chip is good. It's an engine. Yeah, you want to give it a hug. Listen, I'll give you another your, story. You, know, you your want curse another is story? Your gift. Yeah. Well, that's true. It keeps us going. Hundred percent. It's if I didn't have those that, kids that made me drink piss out of a Pepsi uh, cup story? in Dover, New Jersey, when I was four. I'm basically going to build an empire just to stick it down their fucking throat. I'll tell you some something ironic. <laughs> One of my colleagues still works at ESPN, Neil Everett. Okay, yes, Neil. right, Neil, great guy, right? when I was going through one of those moments where I wasn't feeling confident in myself, and we all get it. Yeah, of course. He said to me, do you know who you are? I go, who am I? Batman. He goes, you're, he goes, he goes, Catwoman actually, if I had a choice. <laughs> he goes, um, you're LFC. And I go, LFC? You're Linda fucking Cohn. And then one day I was visiting my brother, Dr. Howard Cohn in Orange County where- The doctor's his, in the building. Yeah. His company, 7.2, is in a building. We were outside, we were chatting. I looked up at the top of his building. What did it say? LFC. I love that. I love it that was so crazy, much. crazy, man. So what happened? So give me give me one story. First of all, the OJ story. You guys were supposed to do the 11 yeah. p.m. Yeah, so doing the 11. Obviously, it's going on earlier in the day, yes. West Coast, but right. we still had to- But the Knicks game was late. We, it was already right, set, right? Right, but no, they, we, ESPN was having the ABC News feed. So you didn't get any sports on ESPN they at the time. They took over the feed? They took, took over, over the, the feed. They took over the feed and we just all, everybody, everybody together, let's watch OJ. And he's going to blow his head off. Yeah. You know, and it was that's crazy. what we all thought. It was and crazy. I'll never forget, we're, me and Gary, here's the monitors in the desk. Yes. And we're just like this. The whole damn time. And we had to stay put. When did it end? When did he pull into the, when did that I end? I want to say it was like 1.30 a.m. Eastern time, Jesus. somewhere around that, you know, don't quote me. Sure. But it was in the wee hours So you guys didn't have a sports center? No, we didn't have a sports center. They kept that news feed yeah, going. Yeah, makes sense. You know, I mean, it was, I, I'm not going to, All right, gonna, Andy, let's know. get some phone calls. Yeah, please do. For <sighs> sure. Oh, you're just By the, the way, best. nice view. It's pretty Two rad, right? Two months hockey season. You, you excited? Go, <laughs> 20 minutes later. Understood, Tyler. Thanks for ruining the Tyler. show. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Downer. The reason Tyler brought that up, a little behind the scenes, the reason we've been debating that I cut off guests is when I know that I have other meetings behind it. Oh. I'm trying to fit it in, and when I when I have nothing behind it, I don't. So that was actually a great job by Tyler, because oh. he's right, he can feel me. I'd already started feeling a little pressure. Good well job, done. Tyler. Well done. John Scott from St. Louis. Hello? John, this is Gary Vee. You're on the Ask Gary Vee Show with the legend, Linda Cohn. Hi, John. That is, that is awesome. Hey, guys, how are you? Great, what's your question? So, uh, myself, along with a group of investors, recently bought the International Racquetball Tour, and we are trying to create or or find ways to create uh, national media exposure and thought, who better to get advice from than you guys? That is a very good point. Yeah. First of all, is racquetball still a sport? Yes. (laughs) I mean, it was big. I played... You know, there are so many different uh, uh, definitions of racquetball of what it used to be. Uh, same with handball. Hey, you know, Linda, there are different, hey, Linda. Yes. Do you know what you just did? <laughs> what? You just basically turned into Dan Patrick. <laughs> you literally just did to this lovely man from St. Louis know, exactly sorry. what Dan Patrick did to you. Yeah, I know. I'm right. sorry. Continue. Continue, John. Racquetball is going to be the biggest sport in America in 2037 yeah. if you make a deal with Snapchat as an OTT play and you develop stars the way Sonny Warblin created Joe Namath. The key for sports is distribution and star making. So the advice I give you is you need to look at Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, and those players as your OTT, not 
ESPN, not ABC, and, and that conglomerate Disney or, or CBS or NBC, because they're going to be looking at it differently, and they're going to make you pay to even be on there, because that's what they do with small things. And I think then you've got to find the most handsome or beautiful racquetball player with charisma in the world and make them a social media star, and now you've got a prayer to have something. Speaking, But here's the thing. We love goofy things, and we put it on top 10. We put on the cornhole yes. championship. Yes. Okay. And I'm like, as I'm reading this in the top 10, I'm like, what the hell did I just read? What does well, it all mean? You but this could, that's correct. the kind of thing, exactly what you said, getting a pretty person or something sure. goofy and crazy to get exposure. Scott, it's star making and distribution in a modern way, the same way that ESPN had to start off with bullfighting and, and, and it's darts. It's John and, or Scott. Is it John? <laughs> I keep calling him Scott, right? There's a John yeah, Scott yeah. who used to play in the John, NHL. John, can you change <laughs> your name the, to not Scott? Not the same one. Got okay. It. John, I think, I think you guys probably know that's the move, right? Yeah, I think so. You know, we've got, we've got to take this opportunity that we have. You know, we've got some very marketable stars out there. Great. And believe it or not, we have over 100 events a year. I believe uh, it. With prize purses of $60,000 and more. And so I believe it. Events, but trying to get out of that box has proven difficult from the past owners. And now that we have a group of investors that are willing to spend the money and, and figure this out, we're very motivated my man, to my take man, this to where it used to be. My man, you are the poker tournaments pre-ESPN coverage. The problem is ESPN's not the place you should do that now with. You need to figure out basically the same model for the new environment of consumption. I like that. I appreciate so that. So you That's need to stuff. really think about what OTT means. Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and Facebook and Snapchat and Twitter are the preview. There are going to be so many places. Content has never been in a better place. You need to cold mm. email Bleacher Report and Barstool and ESPN. So and good. Like you have to find distribution because I, if you gave me the New York Jets right now, if you said, hey, I'm John Scott, like Genie from the future. And if you can name one racquetball player, one, I will give you the New York Jets, I would lose. I cannot name one racquetball player. Nor can I. And wow. Linda Cohn is a Hall of Famer. Legit. <laughs> Legit. So that's it, man. Distribution. Good luck, my man. Thank you very much for the You're advice. Welcome. Guys, it's all distribution. It's all about distribution. It's about getting awareness. And then it's having the right product for the new medium. I would argue in a 360 camera world, racquetball might be in the best place it's ever been. Because if you think about the dynamics of that sport, much like American football needed television to break through the radio, right? Much like radio was a great boxing and horse racing and baseball sport. Right. And NFL football and basketball did great on television. What sports will do great in a mobile 360 VR AR world? Put a GoPro thing on one of these guys' heads. 100%. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh. Who do we have next? Sue Ann. Sue Ann. Linda, I cannot believe you were doing Sports Center the night of OJ. Oh, yes. Incredible. I gotta get back to that in a minute. Other oh. memorable nights. You gotta tell me if you've been oh, on right. one. Like, President yeah, Joe, died Carter, Joe Carter, when he run. hit that home run, Jesus. worked that night. Um, hmm. No president's dying, thank God. No? No. Uh, Were you on oh, the I night? Was in the build, I was in that building. I was in the building, Rangers. Do you know I, I took that. hangers out of the... Oh, I have a great I story. I stole stuff. Yeah. So, oh, I have a name? great story. Sue Ann, oh. devastating. Next. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, listen, game seven, Rangers-Devils, conference final, perhaps the most amazing Mateau. game double over yes. time, Mateau, Mateau, Mateau. That night I was doing the six o'clock sports center, got up to doing it with Charlie Steiner. I said, and Charlie. that's when ESPN, Charlie, ESPN boxing had guy. I'm boxing, boxing guy. loved it. Yes. Been doing Dodgers play by play yes. forever on the radio. Um, uh, doing the 6 p.m. sports center that night. We had hockey back then. I said, Rangers Devils were next. It's gonna be a classic. I had no idea, it really was. But then my bosses said, Linda, we need to talk to you before you go home. I go, wait, there's a game. game I gotta seven. get home. This is it's my game whole life. seven. I gotta go home. I didn't I couldn't yeah. go to the game, blah, 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 because I had to work, yeah. you know? And so he's like, Oh, it won't take long. That's when they basically said they almost fired me. I had two this is a true story. I almost got fired on the night of game seven, Rangers Devils, because they weren't happy with my work. They loved me as a human. They knew I love sports. They said it's not coming out enough. This is two years into my contract. Wow. I had a two year contract with an option for two more. They said we're going to keep the option, but only for one year, but we're gonna to need to see something, improvement within six months. So I was basically a lame duck. 
So here am I am at ESPN dream job two years in no feedback. Oh, by the way, for the first two years telling me good or bad, sure. suddenly night of game seven, you know, that's when they say, hey, we know you know sports. You talk about it all the time. Was this, you have a because, great personality. Was this because everybody was so hyperbolized on Sports Center at that point? I mean, that was the, the aloha means goodbye. Right. And like, people were just making up shit every night. Right. They just felt that I didn't feel comfortable. It's almost like when the red light went on, it wasn't the comfort level. That's some level. shit. I'm pretty pissed because yeah. this is when I consumed and everything. Look, I feel like that was during a shtick era. You were, and I was not shtick. Right, you were depth. Right, as a matter of fact, getting back to Keith and Dan. Which was and a good thank offset. You. That's, thank you, and that's where I felt it really <laughs> was. It I'm was upset like with voice, the feedback. voice of reason. And what I loved about not having a so-called cliche, and I tried the catchphrases, you of know, for the love of elevation and all that and everything. <laughs> You know, I mean, guys, you know, you and, my, and my classic story about Master Batter. Yes, yes that was of good. course, you know, a great name for yes. a softball team. Yes. The Master Batters, <laughs> you know. So, you know, when someone hits a home run. We get it, we get it, we get it. I know, you guys are so quick. Uh, well, yeah, Another no pun intended. Guy. Well, we're doing good. We're hitting Keep the going. Okay. How about the so, night? Wait, real quick. Now okay, I'm just. I'm going. No, oh, I'm no. going all over the place now. You were in Seattle the night Mike Tyson lost to Buster Douglas, right? Because that was 1990, 91. Yes, 90. definitely. It was 90. Yes, it was 90. yes. So it was February 90. It. So I don't know yes. if you know this. I did not go to school that Monday because I was in a state of shock. As long as you weren't crying. I cried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I cried. A, guys, sports was my whole life and I would cry if I was upset. I went out on a limb do on that remember, one. Do you remember the night Tyson lost or no? I, it was, the, it's, to this it's day, it's the most moment. shocking thing ever I, in boxing I, history. That the is the most biggest, sh- it, I would argue that that's the than biggest shock. It's bigger than Leon shock. Spinks. A hundred percent. Yes. Well, first of all, I wasn't around for that. Yeah. Well, I <laughs> was not also around for the 80 uh, Olympic match, so like I was too young. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, but I mean in boxing, no question. Do you think it's, I think it's the most shocking moment in sports history for somebody that's 41 years old. Help me here. What, what can, happened in the last 30 years that is more shocking than Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson? Oh, the Patriots coming back from a 28-3 deficit to beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. You want a fun fact? I did not watch one play of that Super Bowl. Yeah. Nor any other Super Bowl the Patriots have been in the last three out of four times. You uh, must have been even. Because I don't watch. Yeah. That wasn't shocking. I would argue that the Jets' Monday Night Miracle, named Monday Night Miracle, was more shocking. There was eight people left in that fucking stadium. We were losing 30 to seven with 10 minutes left, and we won. And what did you win exactly? <laughs> the greatest <laughs> moment of my life. Actually, this is a true story. The greatest <laughs> moment of my life is when the Jets beat the Patriots in the second round of the that playoffs. That was huge. That is was that when, stunning. Is, is that when Bart, Bart Scott, Scott said, to, can't wait. Yeah, to Sal that Palantonio. That is the best day of my life. I've been married, I have two children. Best day of my life. Best well, day of my life. Jets beating Patriots in the second round of the playoffs. Not a Super Bowl. Not even an I AFC Championship that. game. A divisional playoff game. Nobody thought they were going to win. I thought I was going up to Boston to lose 55-6 to six was my official prediction. They lost 45 to three, the, three, six weeks earlier. Best day ever. Ever. I understand that. I understand. You should love Tom Brady. He's all about nutrition. He's got a book coming out, TB12. You're about fitness. You know, I mean, this guy, you know, he's your guy. You just don't know it yet. Listen, I will say this, and I'll never admit it to anybody other than you. Okay. It breaks my heart that this is a good human being. See, Michael Jordan's easy. He's right. a terrible human being. <laughs> Right, so, so he was easy to consume because yes, he destroyed my heart and made me cry often, but thank God, he's an awful guy. <laughs> Tom, on the other hand. Great human. Seems to be the case. Yeah. Where were we? <laughs> Where are you calling? Where? Sounds Maybe, like a weird ring. By the way, nice uh, Hong Kong. Hello? Maybe Hong Kong he's calling. Who? Julie, Julie it's Gary V. you're on the Ask Gary. Julie, this is Gary V. Hey, Gary V. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You're Linda, on? how are you? Oh, great. Hello. Where are you from, Jules? I'm good. Where are you from, Jules? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. I Ooh, love it. Oh, that's awesome. What can we help you with? All right, I've got two questions for you. I'll make up for Sue Ann. Uh, my first one is about NASCAR. Ooh. If you look in the stands during a NASCAR race, yep. these days they're basically empty. Yep. What does NASCAR need to do to rebrand and market in this era? 
Yeah, it is really on the downturn. Now that Dale Jr., the most popular driver, probably in all of NASCAR history, when you think about it in this world, uh, is retiring. He's just going to join NBC. Uh, these guys, I mean, they're just not, the personality are not there. You know, are you tell me, who's your favorite driver? Is it a guy like Kyle Busch? Is that, you know, I mean, who is the guy that lights your fire? Because you need more drivers that light fires. Well, obviously, Jimmy Johnson, he's the All-American. You had Jeff Gordon, everybody booed him when he goes yeah. around. Julie, what's up? You know, it's funny. I'm sitting here. So are you a big NASCAR fan? I'm really not, but I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, so it's really the home of a lot of drivers. Huge I'm home. not far from a lot of their shops. So this is going to be great. I'm glad I asked that because it's going to be easier for me now to say what I'm going to say. I'm weirdly very excited about NASCAR's downturn because I bet the farm with a bunch of my friends seven, eight years ago when NASCAR was clearly on the way up, yeah. that it wasn't sustainable and that I thought the bottom was gonna fall out. And so I'm proud of myself. Why did you, st- I'm curious, Gary, why did you think that at that time? I thought that they were doing, so I'm a big believer in tripling down on your strengths and staying true to your DNA. I had felt that it, there was so much momentum going on that they started creating behavior in the NASCAR ecosystem that seemed to me more Super Bowl-esque, more yeah. mainstream sports. What they were trying to do was expand, and, and I think they took their fans for granted. Mm-hmm. I think they felt that their tried and true would stay there, and I thought they made a terrible bet on not, I thought they were one of the worst organizations with the digital world that was coming. They were behind. They were super behind. They should have been triple downing on letting their drivers do things. And I felt like they became more money oriented and more mainstream than more long term, tried and true. And comp- they, they should have really, really, really embraced social and digital. They went the other way. And I think it cost them. I, and, and I just, it's, I mean, it's crazy. The ratings on TV are non-existent. Yeah. Julie's educating me. To me, it's already a foregone conclusion. I didn't realize the stands were that empty. And I didn't even know when I heard that Dale Jr. is going to join NBC. And I'm like, I didn't even know they had NASCAR. I don't know where to look to find NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, so Julie, I know you got a second question. Let's get to that. Yeah. I mean, here's my punchline. I think what they need to do is modernize and storytell where people are. And by the way, Julie, this is my recommendation for all organizations. Yeah. Linda's beloved hockey is stunningly irrelevant as well. Yes, regional. It's just the truth. It's regional like NASCAR. That's right. And And what baseball is becoming. A hundred percent. Like you've got to storytell in a modern way. This is where the NBA has gone global and completely embraced and I'm unbelievably bullish on the NBA while quite concerned about things like NASCAR hockey. And and, and baseball is interesting because I think it has a, a lock on entertainment during the summer to go to. Because there's no competition. Correct. So I think they're in a nice spot. It's the same reason I think the USFL should come back. I think spring football should come back. I have been having weird dreams later of rebooting the USFL, starting a spring football league, because I think it would work, because I think football is so popular in America that think about all the great college players that don't make the league. It will not be the NFL, but spring football would work in this country. I totally agree. People are killing for what CFL highlights and loving and loving the I spring do arena football, football Remember highlights. I said it. Julie, second question. That's a great second idea. question. Uh, what are your thoughts on the lack of coverage for the Tour de France? Oh. And do you think since the Lance era, in quotes there, that cycling in America has faded? I barely knew it was here. Yeah. Linda? I'm telling you, who cares? <laughs> yeah. I couldn't care less. Nobody cares. I, I respect overseas in Europe. They love it. They love the cycling. People ride their bikes in this country, but they're not doing it yeah, the way they're doing Yeah, we hate bikes in America. It. Yeah. Like, like, I think we like them they're for annoying. ourselves. Yeah. You know what? Fuck bikes. I know. They're in, <laughs> you know, Gary, Gary, they're in our way. <laughs> Gary, they're in our way. Listen. Listen, Julie, this is, cla- you know what? Amer- Listen, as somebody who wasn't born in America, the thing I respect, but as uh, such a happy American, the thing I respect about America is also its weakness. We're so insular. Like, we're finally getting around to soccer, but like, if you're doing well outside the US as a sport, we out of spite say fuck you. Like, Formula One, go fuck yourself. Like, cycling, go fuck yourself. And for a long time, even soccer, we're just funny that way. Don't shove it down my throat, though. 
with the soccer. I mean, I have a hard time. Well, and I got to do highlights work, of it. You work for the organization that, that loves shoved soccer. It. No, I know. They, that they doesn't they love sho- soccer. ESPN is the smartest. When they sign the right, all of a sudden, miraculously, after they lock up the World Cup for the rest of our lives, yeah. they start showing me top 10 plays from fucking Europe. Right, and it's always number one. Soccer yeah. is always number Some one in top 10. Some fucking bicycle kick from yeah. La Liga. I Who mean, gives come a fuck? on. All right, let's move on to what, Julie, you're the best. Great love call. you, thank you for calling. That Thanks was really, guys, that was great. By the way, Julie, that was, that was great, great actually. Call. Yeah. That was a great, great call. Had culture and sports mixed in. We'll give you one more, Andy, in the face of Tyler's face. <laughs> I'm just having too much. Linda, do you think that we should start a daily sports radio show? Can you fit it in your schedule and Who's my schedule? Who's number one? You? No, no, I oh. know that. <laughs> We're not talking about life. I'm talking about in sports radio right now. Who's number one? Um, Mike Francesa still? No, no. I mean, I'm seven late minutes late for dinner. That's fine. All right. Linda Cohn, the legend, right. Hall Blame of Famers it on in the me, building. Tyler. Tell, Legit. Const- tell Constantine we'll be fine. Myself. Tell him who's this? Nick from Bowling Green. Nick from Bowling Green. Nick, are wow. you there? Yes, man. You yeah, made it. You here. penetrated. You've won this rare. I mean, the odds of you breaking through were very high. But you did it, Nick, from Bowling Green. Dude, yeah. that is amazing. I can't, I, like it showed up, it was like, this might be Vayner Media, but we're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're familiar with that. Nick, what up, what up? Apple your, what? knows you, man. It's awesome. Amazing. Wow. So Holy what's your crap. question, brother? Uh, actually, um, yeah, my, 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 I guess, man, golly. Cool, hold on, I gotta like relax a little bit. Um, Deep breath. So my, my, my question is, is so, I feel like like I've listened to you. I've I've, I've done a lot of your. Um, I've consumed a lot of your content, and I'm trying to dwindle that and just hustle and work. My thing is, is like you said, be self aware. And I realize I know I'm not an entrepreneur. I guarantee it. Like I'm just not Good. organized enough. I'm not anal enough. Yeah. By um, the way, real quick. No. I am neither organized or anal. Be you, man. Be oh. you. <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. What I am is okay, completely okay, okay. fearless, and that is. That to me is the one that you need to be because entrepreneurship is lonely and scary. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is like I, I don't like I can't do that. Like I've, I mean, I've had discussions with my father. Who thinks that he can? Good for you. And I'm just like, we can't. So I wish I, I wasn't. Know, it's hard. I mean it. Yeah, like you yeah. need to. Good for you. So what? So what's the punchline? So the punchline is is like I think I have a talent for talking and just just talking about like football because I'm in love with football, which I think is. I mean, like, who's your team? Oh, man, I'm on. Uh, the Tennessee Titans, definitely okay. first right. and foremost. Eric not, De- By the I'm way, Eric Decker telling. is an amazing signing, and I think Mariota is, is a breakthrough player. Stay healthy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing. As long as he stays healthy, man, I'm I'm excited about this year. Like, I saw USA Today was like, "Hey, they're going to be 12 and four." I'm like, awesome. "Dude, don't listen to I'm fucking like, USA Today." Are they still a newspaper? <laughs> By the way, that same <laughs> USA Today, that same USA Today said the Jets were going to be one and fifteen, and I was like, "Yes, Sam Darnold." You love Josh yeah, McCown, exactly, don't you? Exactly, exactly. As a human, yeah, yes, I know. But, but I really so want to go one and You know, 15. he wants to win with your team. I'm sure he does. Did you hear what Brandon dude. Marshall had to say? About, I'm sure. Yeah, they had to apologize. You know, he took the high road. Nick, I don't know if you dude. heard, but Linda and I are starting what's going to be the number one it sports is. radio show in America. We probably need a third member. You could be like, the, that sidekick. Honestly, honestly, the thing is, is like that's exactly what I want to do. No shit, I want Dick. to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing about it other than the random lottery that might have just happened that has no chance of happening? Right. Nick from Bowling Green. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's Linda and Gary and Nick, Nick from, from Bowling, Bowling Green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are what you do- doing Nick, about it? you need to put out content every day. Right. You should basically create SportsCenter on Twitter and Instagram every day. Phone to your you face. YouTube, man, anything. It's so easy now. Yeah, Linda's pissed. She had to take a That's tape right. from February to fucking July. She sat on a fucking tape. I basically Nick. walked across the country. Nick, Let's she embellish. fucking sat on a tape for six months. Yes. What are you doing? I so okay. What I'm doing is I'm getting I'm getting in contact, especially with fantasy football uh, podcast producers. Good, good. And I'm offering opportunities for me to just read articles that happen to be on good. their site good. that they can't read and sending it to because them. Because they're not like, good at reading or they don't have time to read? <laughs> uh, it's more that they, pro- they probably just don't have time to read because I mean, if they're doing podcasts, Lord willing, they have good voices and they're sure. good at reading. Are you good um, Are you good at reading? Yes, I'm very good at reading. I'm, I'm atrocious very good, I mean, at reading. 
No, really, I can't read for shit. <laughs> I loved reading. I was always the kid that's in that's class, huge. and that that's was why red. I could have never why. done. I probably would have been the. I probably would be in the sports broadcasting hall of fame if I could read. I Not probably would have. Yeah, I probably would have went down that. That's route. why our radio show is going to work because you don't have to read. You're just talking. It's awesome. You're weaving in and out ideas and opinions. Linda, Nick from Bowling Green, I have something amazing to tell you. I did okay. a show on Sirius called Wine and Web for about yes. seven months with Jake's dad. Well, this is real. Oh, Sam Ben Ruby. Sam Ben Ruby, a legend, radio executive. The first, I, so I do nothing. I prep nothing. I do my first show. I go in and it goes to commercial time and I have to do a live read. In the history of my life, I've never done anything more embarrassing. How long did it take you to get through the 30 seconds? Oh, t- seven years. <laughs> Not one thing right. <laughs> Complete disaster. I fucking like, I'm, you know, I never get flustered, but like, I won't even like read the fucking like Jewish stuff at Rosh Hashanah <laughs> because I'm like so bad at Baruch reading, right? Atado, no. Yes. So I am flustered. Sam Ben and Ruby runs in. Everything up to this point is like legend. Like I'm gonna be the next fucking Howard Stern. But now he walks in, and goes fuck. He goes, okay, listen, do what Howard did. Read it beforehand and then improv it. Literally the next commercial. The greatest live read of course. in the history of radio. That's why yeah. Howard's great because he did that and you. That's what that I off. do. Guess you what? Copied it. I have great win. news. This is real. The producer of that show, yeah. Jordan, emails me randomly the other day. He has the tape. So I'm going to air it. So you too have a tape. Like I, I have a I tape. Call, listen, I'm 41. <laughs> I'm no spring fucking chicken. I call it tape too. Nick from Bowling Green. What yeah. else are you doing? Because. Randomly DMing people that have sports, fantasy sports podcasts and offering to read things for them feels okay. I feel like there's more moves in you. I, I, I tried starting a vlog and tried to, 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 no, okay, not tried. I recorded one video of me. I guess like my fear about the document versus creating is like if I'm going to do something about sports, I, like, I would be better if I've got like um, somebody to partner with, and I'm not saying like y'all. Okay. I'm not saying that at all because okay. I don't. But like being able to have somebody who is like a a an analyst, but then be able to have me where I could just you know, talk to them and like yeah, yeah, exactly. You and, the Yang. You feel yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, well, good and news. So, what's your what's your Twitter handle? Uh, at N Perquette, my last name at N Perquette. Spell it. Change it. <laughs> Linda, is that your actual last name? Yeah. What? Yeah, Cone. Cone. Okay. Cone. Yeah, yes, okay. that's my last name. Yeah. As somebody named but Vaynerchuk, that's... do not change it. Just spell it for me. Okay. N. Okay. P R I. Okay. Q U E T T E. Linda, that's like a classic fucking hockey last name. Why are you mad at him? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, we'll try to figure it out later. But we understand he's better playing off people because yes. solo, it's a little slow listen. Yes, listen, Linda's giving you honest, yeah. Hall of Famers know how to analyze. Legit. Right? How would you say okay. I'm doing? A, say, say an, a, a, an A plus. Thank you. And Nick from Bowling Green, when Nick. he's solo? Nick needs to like I like the side. Give me role. the give me the answer. How he is, needs help. What's the grade? F. The grade right? No, I'm not gonna okay. give him an F. D minus. I would. I I think he could do. I'll go C minus. Okay, Nick. I'm an A plus. You're a C minus. I'm being kind, Nick. Yes, we know she really <laughs> wanted to give an F. I think the fact that you just put out your handle, we're gonna throw it up on everything here. There are thousands of people who follow me that love sports who think they're the yin to your yang, and they're gonna connect with you on Twitter, and you're literally gonna find your partner in crime through getting through to this call, and it's gonna change your life, and there's gonna be a 30 for 30 one day in 71 years about Nick from Bowling Green and Sally from Arkansas. And and Nick, block out the noise, ignore the the ugly mentions you might get on Twitter after this. Okay. You you never know. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I will. Because you have to, you know, that's, Gary knows this. You have to treat the good news with the bad news. The good reaction with the bad news. I prefer the bad news, Linda. 
I know you do. Yeah. I love when well, people, when you showed me that penguins towel, that's it. secretly I was like, fuck yeah. But you know I'll what I love? Show you well, this, is, this is what I love from one of your videos. I hear everything you're saying. I know. I love one of your videos. It's like, don't just rip me, rip my opinion. Tell me what's better. I love it. Give me your opinion. But that's what yeah. I love that you say that in your videos listen, to the people that have with these stupid mentions. A hundred, listen, I prefer the negativity because it feeds me. I prefer the positivity because it feeds me. Now what? Yeah, I'm all about find the positive. Right. I thought Nick was a little too negative. And, uh, no, the, Nick's still here, Linda. Oh, Nick. <laughs> Talk to him directly. Yeah. Talk to him directly. Linda, Linda, Nick, Linda. Nick, I definitely, you're a little, I definitely Linda, want listen to Nick advice. now. Okay. Okay. You said your piece. You said I, he's I a bath and he's negative. Advice. Nick, hold on, go ahead. What? I gave him a C minus because I felt bad I ripped his name. Nick, go what ahead. do you think? Yeah. I was just I was just saying like like Linda, like I know I got it, so I got a C minus because you're being sweet and nice and, and I ripped your name and I felt bad. Keep no, going, that's Nick. okay. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm gonna get sh- I'm gonna get shit for my name anyway. It's all yep. right. Um, the thing is, is I, I I want your your critique. I want your neg. I, well, not your negative, but like your critiquing of why I made the C minus as opposed to. I mean, obviously, I can't go. I will against say this. I'm gonna say, jump hey, in. Plus. I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in. Here's why. Okay. I want to say is this call has continued. Yes. Uh, ad nauseum yes. how long it's been. I agree. He he hasn't, we <laughs> haven't even started. Okay. We're in the national anthem of a 19 yeah. inning game to give you context of how Rangers long I'm keeping for, uh, Nick Nets and from Braves bowling. Do you remember that Islanders game. fucking Capitals playoff yes, game? Yes, five yes. overtimes. That's, what, that's what this call is yes. going to turn into. Okay. Tyler's sweating. <laughs> Constantine's at some fucking sushi place daughter, waiting for my me. My daughter Sammy Sammy's might be at the door. Sammy's pissed. <laughs> I mean, you know. the doctor's in the Which building. Constantine is this? Is this Morales? No, this is Constantine. I know. Like a like a pharma company, he's a good friend of mine oh, now. Nice. Client, but huge right, boxing back to Nick. fan. Nick from Nick, Bowling Nick, here's Green. the deal: you've loosened up as this call has gone along, yes. which shows progress, which I find the positive. So out maybe of it's it. now a real C minus. No, I no, it's not. And I really think once he has some material to talk about and feel comfortable in his surroundings and knows that he belongs in a situation, I think his personality will come out and he'll challenge those he works with. Hey, Nick, let me yeah. throw you a curveball that's intended with serious love. Ready? Okay. Yep. I'm gonna give you an F, and I'm gonna tell you why. It's not that I actually mean it, but I'm gonna try to inspire you, Tough love. you and everybody else. The number of okay. people that I asked for critiques and phone calls I made to critique me and what I did in my career, goose fucking egg. As a matter of fact, Robert Parrish, double goose egg. Wow. I would tell you that I am obsessed with doing. Let me give you a really, really, really good piece of advice for you and everybody else. Linda, out the gate, right? Playing hockey with the boys, she just did. She would hear feedback, but she did, 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 did. I genuinely believe that people looking for feedback or perfection, there's just a million excuses for not doing. You should 100% produce audio podcast form, audio files on Anchor, you're following me, fucking, Play along and do Sports Center. Play along with somebody. I'm like, just do, brother. Everybody's coming up with excuses. It comes from insecurity. I get it. But the reason I want to give you an F is I want you to hang up and be like, you know what? Fuck Linda. Fuck Gary. I'm gonna go out and just do shit. Like, just start putting stuff on. I'm gonna use a joke here. Put shit on tape. <laughs> just fucking. Linda <laughs> had to fucking bake fucking cookies, cookies to trick people into producing something that could be seen. You can sit in your fucking underpants in an hour and have. 10,000 times more people see it in an hour. Nick, you're living through the greatest era of production and distribution of content in the history of mankind. Take advantage of it. Block out all the other voices. Fuck everybody else and just fucking do. Got it? Got it. Good. You, you never want to look back and say you didn't try. That's Regret. my yeah. yeah. Just do, man. Don't worry. Thing. Who gives a fuck what Linda's? I don't give a fuck that she's a well, Hall of Famer. I'm actually. I, fuck her critique. I think you know he what has critique? Hope. She I, almost, I dude, she's positive. a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> All time appearances on Sports Center, right. and two years in, those fuck faces said to her, "You're on yeah. the way out." On what so what does that yeah. have to tell you? Yeah. Don't do you give understand? Up. Good. See ya. Okay. Bye, Nick. <laughs> Linda? Yes. I love you. Same here, man. I've got to go now. Constantine, give my His regards. Calling. You get to ask the question of the day. Any question you want, thousands of answers on Facebook and YouTube. Question of the day. Does this have to have like serious meaning? This or can be could like be the moment? Any question you want. Okay. A sports question would be preferable because I, I get like excited. I like sports with you and I think Jets. So to me, this current team, we know you don't want them to win a game. No, don't let's go be there. Realistic. Let's go okay. somewhere cooler because you're such a fucking genius encyclopedia. Take me back 
to an era where you ask, int- well, don't you- tell me what the Jets are gonna do this year. Tell, ask me something like, Steve Young, Randall Cunningham, say something about Grant okay. Fior, like what about McDonald, the Calgary fucking mustache? Give me something about like like something really weird, okay. like Julio so like Cesar Chavez, well, I Meldrick was... Taylor. What, give me something really okay. fucking nerdy. All right, well here's the thing, being a goalie, and you mentioned about how I created this tape and yes. I made cookies to yes. do this and I made this happen. On that tape, remember this was like early 80s, okay? This was like yes. or, it was in mid 80s, because yes. it was got me the job at Seattle yes. in 88. So, uh, so it was around 87, 86, there was a goalie who had a serious injury and it was so disgusting to look at and it was something out of Game of Thrones, you could make the case. Do you remember that goalie's name? Was it a name? North Star? It was not a North Star. Okay, I don't remember. Okay, but that's you wanted what, me to try popular. to, you know. Nope, that's it. That's it. That's it. And the winner, the first person to answer correctly in the comments, Gets dinner with Linda Cohn, the legend. <laughs> That's right. I, I hope you. it's another goalie. You're awesome. Okay. All right. Love you so much. Thank you so much. Gary. Uh, you keep asking questions, we'll keep answering them. <laughs>